Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Tomorrow's Town series Q&A. My name is Jana Toomey. I'm an assistant director at Michigan Tech Center for Educational Outreach. Tomorrow's Town series is all about showcasing in-demand careers through virtual job chatting videos, Q&As, and other curriculum resources. Today, we are joined by Ryan Marinelli, who is a journeyman substation technician for UPCO, and we're going to be learning more about his career. For those of you who haven't had the chance yet, make sure you head on over to our Tomorrow's Talent Series website and give that video a watch. So hi, Ryan. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Glad to have you here. Um, for any viewers watching, if you have any questions, feel free to utilize that Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. All right. So just to jump into questions here, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about what your you know, position as a journeyman substation technician entails? So being a journeyman substation technician, uh, we do handle all aspects of substation um, you know, equipment, the, the you know, uh, proper flow of electricity in and out of the substations. We maintain all the equipment. Um, we do a lot of computer work. We spend time with um, other departments. Uh, there's a whole lot of different things that we do daily. So it's kind of hard to pick just one little thing to talk about. Understandable. Um, how did you first get started on your path to your current position? So I was in the, um, in the HVAC field for about 10 years prior to working for the power company. And a uh, apprenticeship position opened up uh, for the uh, substation technician program. And I was fortunate enough to be the first journeyman or apprentice substation technician to go through the program. Um, so I went through my four year apprenticeship at UPCO. Uh, it's like 8,000 hours. And uh, to get to my journeyman status as a journeyman substation technician. Wow, first one. That's awesome. Is that a more common path? now with that program being established or how do other people come into this kind of position? Um, I guess I'm kind of fortunate the way that I ended up into the uh, into a journeyman substation technician uh, a program. Um, I think now you can go to like Northern Michigan University offers a uh, power technician program. So you can, it's a two year course, which focuses on um, substation equipment, and testing and uh, construction. So you can go through that two-year program and, uh, and get into uh, an apprenticeship that way now. But it does, so um, and it, there are a couple different ways you can enter it, but it does require some sort of a certification or training of some sort? Yeah, it usually is a two-year degree that um, most uh, places look for uh, before you become an apprentice. Uh, take some uh, electrical and mechanical aptitude and maybe some aptitude tests before you uh, you are allowed into the apprenticeship. So you said you're in HVAC. Um, what aspects of this field made you decide to go this route? Um, a lot of similarities between the HVAC and the substation world. Um, lots of electric, or electrical and mechanical uh, aptitude is needed. Uh, so before I worked for the power company, um, I was used to reading um, prints you know, for electrical diagrams and that sort of thing, doing the HVAC, which really gave me a head start in uh, in the substation field. What do you think are some of your favorite parts of this job? Mm, boy, I there most everything about my job I love, um, but I would say the variety of what I get to do daily uh, is probably my favorite thing. Uh, one day I could be testing relays uh, inside of a control house. The next day we could be setting a large power transformer with a crane, uh, you know, and doing a bunch of rigging. Uh, also get to drive, you know, semi trucks and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of really fun things that we get to do. So it's hard to pick just one thing. So what are some of the problems that you work on solving in this position or some of the challenges that you face? I think that um, since we are so I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, jack of all trades. Uh, we do a lot of different things um, with electrical troubleshooting. Uh, we use computers a lot. So you have to kind of be half IT person along with a mechanic and electrician. Um, so the troubleshooting portion, when something breaks um, and knowing how to repair it, that's probably the, uh, 
the most um, difficult portion of the job. So um, do you often work with other positions such as linemen or other professionals in the field? Yeah, we work hand in hand. Um, you know, since you, know, you can't have a substation without uh, transmission lines entering the substation and leaving them, we all have to work together. Uh, a lot of the jobs require switching, which has uh, us substation technicians de-energizing the transmission lines uh, so that the uh, linemen can go out and work on them. We also work directly with metering because we do metering inside of our substations for uh, for bus metering and uh, control house metering. So. Yeah, we get to work kind of with everybody. So what voltage does power enter a substation and what voltage does power leave the substation? Okay, so <clears throat> there's many different voltages that come into a substation, but we'll stick with um, 69,000 volts because that's our most common for UPCO distribution substations. So 69,000 volts comes in it uh, goes through a power transformer, which then reduces it to 12,470 volts, which is our distribution voltage that goes out on the power lines that you would see um, like in town, you know, in front of your house. So that 12,470 is three phase power. So what we do to feed your house, it goes to single phase, 7,200 volts. Uh, then it goes through the transformer that you'd see on your pole. And then that drops it to uh, uh, 120 to 240 volts um, to feed your house. So that's what uh, most of our appliances in our houses are 120 volts. Wow, that's a big difference from 69,000. Right, so and I guess the reason why the voltage is higher is because you can run a higher voltage on a smaller piece of wire for a longer distance. That's why we step the voltage down as it gets closer to the source where we use the power. Oh, interesting. So, um, you know, in your video, you showed a couple different um, kind of some newer technology, some older technology. Um, how has your job changed since you first started, you know, both with technology or techniques or, or trends? Um, what has that looked like over the years? You know, I think that um, in the 10 years that I've been um, in the substation department, um, a lot more of our work is... Um, is laptop driven now. Uh, we, we all carry laptops that are connected uh, to the internet at all times. Uh, we can download programs as we need uh, fit to talk to different um, pieces of communication devices. Uh, where back in the day, it was mostly um, electromechanical instead of a microprocessor. So a lot of the um, field repair pieces that are gone now, and now uh, we're going to you know microprocessor based equipment which is, um, it requires a lot less maintenance, um, but the, uh, I guess the skills needed to keep them maintained, um, you know, you have to keep up, you know, it's getting a little bit uh, more difficult to work on. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, the new technology, um, where else do you see the future of this field going or other skills that future substation technicians will need to have? Well, I mean, there's, as long as there's gonna be power in somebody's house, uh, you know, where you'd be using electricity, we're gonna need substation technicians, um, regardless if it's, if it's gonna be, uh, you know, power coming from a power plant that's, you know, coal or gas driven or wind energy or uh, even solar, uh, everything still goes down through a substation and uh, all that equipment is gonna to have to be maintained. So like, as I showed in the video, some of those uh, where the lines come into the substation, the breakers and the transformers, and the relays and the control house, um, all those have to be maintained uh, and then inspected regularly. So um, the need for us probably isn't going to change a whole lot, um, you know, because it's a it's a needed field. Do you um, do you usually work at just one single substation, or do you kind of cover a, a region of them? I don't know how close are they together, or does it depend? Well, it does depend. Um, I think that. The, the department that I work in, um, there's six of us technicians and we cover, I think there's around 30 substations. Uh, and that includes the distribution substations that sends the power to your house, along with um, strictly transmission substations also. And they can be as close as only a couple of miles apart, depending on the, uh, the voltage support needs of the area. 
So in the future, um, what are some new responsibilities that you could take on or new posi positions that you can move into? I think for me right now, and actually um, my job title, I am a journeyman relay technologist. So I'm a, I'm a journeyman substation technician, but I went through another two year apprenticeship after that, that, um, that the Upper Peninsula Power Company, um, pretty, they, it's another internal apprenticeship that uh, allows me to go in and test the relays that I test and that sort of thing, which is a little bit of a step above just a substation technician. So I'm kind of, I, I took the time and, um, and did advance into that relay technologist program, which makes us uh, maybe just a, you know, a little bit um, sharper technician, I guess you could say. So what is one word you would use to describe people in this field? Um, well-rounded, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's two words, but, or resourceful. All right, that's a good one. Um, do you have any advice for students who might be interested in getting into this field? Um, I do. I think that if, uh, if mechanical um, aptitude and uh, an electricity uh, interests you, it is an awesome field to get into. There are so many different things that you can put your hands on daily. Um, you know, even if you work for a power company like I do, or if you work for a contractor, the, the work that's involved is very rewarding. There's different things to do all the time. All right, is there anything else that you'd like students to know about this field that we haven't discussed yet? Um, you know, I think besides the, the rewarding um, portion of the work, uh, you get to see as you're building a substation from, uh, you know, from a, a field that has nothing in it to a completed substation with uh, transmission lines coming in and out and relays talking to each other. Uh, I think that, I think that it's something that if you're, I guess I'm kind of losing myself here a little bit, <laughs> but um, if, you, if you have any interest in that sort of field and the, and I guess the pay is probably one of the other things that, uh, that a student might want to uh, to look at too, because it's pretty pretty rewarding in the pay area also. All right, Ryan. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank our other Tomorrow's Talent Series partners, My STEM Network, Upper Peninsula Michigan Works, Bay College, Ogiba Community College, and our CTE directors. Um, if you liked this video and you want to learn about more careers, make sure you stop by our Tomorrow's Talent Series website and check us out on Instagram. Well, thank you so much for being here, Ryan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right.